welcome to In God's Flow with PM Blossom. And the definition of revolution is this, the forcible, violent overturning and overthrowing of a government or order or system. Let's be clear, I am not talking about overthrowing and overtaking the United States of America's government. I'm talking about the government, the order, and the system that lives in you, that dominates you, that rules you, and it reigns over you. Every one of us, if we're not careful, you will have a system, an order, a government of sort that will rule and reign and dominate you, meaning it will tell you what to do, you will do that whether you like it or not. And so as, as, as believers, we we are to take dominion and authority over anything that's ruling us, whether it's a, 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 a addiction or lust, passion, desire, appetite, whatever is driving you and destroying you, it is your responsibility as a man of God, a woman of God, to take authority over it. Today, we're going to talk about the similarities of the two kingdoms, the kingdom you've been born into, all right, and the kingdom that you are born of. Again, now let me say something. We're going to be talking, and we this this is going to be a long series. The series is going to start born into, born in sin and shaped in iniquity. The next part, which I am on right now, is born in and born with. Somebody say born with. Born with means what God has given you, your talent, your gift, your ability, your capability, and, and your, your resources. That's born with. And the last part is to be born again. Born again. Born again. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. So we have born into, born with, and born again. I need you to go to Genesis, the first chapter, the sixth verse. Then you're gonna to go to Genesis 26, 27. You don't need that one. You know that by heart. All right. I, I, I need you to, to hear me. God names, how would I put it? No, God creates and he names and he gives a function to everything he creates. He names it or he names them. After he gives it the name, hear me, he will give it the function and you are responsible after the function. Genesis 1, 6 says, and God said, let there be a firmament in the middle of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. He names the firmament, which was already there. The, the scripture did not say he created the firmament. Okay, I need to make that clear. Okay, because a lot of times when you read your scripture, you're thinking that he created, the firmament was already there. It says, listen, and God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters. He, the, the firmament has already been named by God and in the same breath, he gives the firmament the function. Somebody say function. All right, Genesis 1:26, 27 says, let us make man in our own image and our own likeness that man may have dominion and authority over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, the beast of the field. Now, now we go into the create. He creates man, then he names man, and then he gives man a function. Let me say it again. He creates man, and he names man, and he gives man a function. All right, so he says, you're, you, you're a man. Let us make man in our own image and our own likeness, that man may have dominion and authority over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, the beast of the field. You are man, humanity. But I created you, I'm naming you, and now I'm going to tell you what you are supposed to do on the earth realm. Did you hear what I said? So God creates man, he names man, and he will tell you the function. Isn't that amazing? When we got so many millions of people on the face of the earth running around acting like they don't know what they are supposed to be doing. And I'm really talking about believers. Don't have a clue what your call is. Don't have a clue what your gifting, your talent, your ability, your capabilities, your resources are. Don't have a clue what your destiny or your purpose is, even though God has 
did all of this at the beginning of birth and even before your mother met your father or your grandfather met your grandmother, listen, name, function. Name, function. Let me say something to you. God is like a manufacturing company. Manufacturing company will take a product, they will make the product. After they make the product, they name the product. After they name the product, they say, this product does this, this, and such and such. And not only will it tell you what the product does, it will also tell you in the manual many times what the product does not do. So when you look at God and you want to try to compare things so you can get it in your head what God does, think of a manufacturing company, a, a, a company that produces bikes. And they said, this is a bicycle. This is, I've named this a bicycle, all right? And this is the function of the bicycle. Let me give you the definition of function, and, and I, I need to put uh, a lot of emphasis on function and operational. So I need you to keep those in your head, function and operational. Function is an activity or purpose that is intended for a person to do naturally. An activity or purpose that is intended for a person or thing to do naturally. So. Let us make man in our own image and our own likeness, that man may have dominion and authority over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, the beast of the field. After he creates man, he says, this is what you are supposed to do, and you're not going to have a hard time doing it because it's going to come naturally for you. It's going to come natural for you. And natural means that it is already in you. All right? This is one thing about God. Anything that God has called you to do, and a lot of people, they, they just like to get away. You got an excuse about everything. I can't do this because this is happening. I can't do this because my wife. I can't do this because my husband. I can't do this because my this, that, and such and such. No, 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 no. Whatever God has called you to do in this manual, and the manual is your book, you can do so because when he created you, he gave you every bit of equipment to do. Meaning what thing? Meaning your gift, your talent, your ability, your capability, your resources was already there before your mother met your father and your grandfather met your grandfather. So he is not telling you or commanding you to do something that you cannot do. Oh, I can't do this. Oh, this makes me ill. Oh, I'm not equipped for this. No, 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 no. The word of God says anything that God demands us to do, Good, bad, or ugly. And you know what? I said ugly because some of the things that God has told you to do is ugly to you. It's not ugly to God. Am I right? So anything he tells you to do, you can do it naturally. Go back to Genesis 1, 26, 27. After he creates man, he commands you to do it naturally. Let us make man in our own image and our own likeness, that man may have dominion and authority of fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, the beast of the field. And then when you go to the next verse, he says something strange. He says, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish your... Now, this, the fruitful and the multiplying, man has never had a problem with. Man don't have no problem with being fruitful and multiplying. If man had a problem with that, you and I would not be here. Babies everywhere. Did you hear me? But man does have a problem. When God commands him to be like him. We don't have a problem multiplying. We don't have a problem being fruitful. We don't have a problem. Good Lord knows we don't. Listen, replenishing the earth. But when God says, let us make a man like us. To act like us, to think like us, to move like us, to be powerful and have dominion like us. Man shrinks, shrinks back and says, I got a problem with that. And the problem you have, how do, how do I put it? It's a religious problem. That's what it is. Because you've been taught that you cannot walk like God. And it, you've been taught opposite of what the scripture says. You've been taught that you are not made in the image of God. You're just some worm somewhere and you're going to keep sinning and keep sinning and keep doing wrong until the day you die and you're going to ask God to have mercy before the day you die and you're going to float onto heaven. That is not the plan of God for you. The plan of God for you is 
that you have dominion and authority over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, the beast of the field. Notice I did not say dominion and authority over any man. Dominion and authority over the creeping things of the earth, the beast of the field, the fowl of the air. And if you don't think you have dominion and authority over that, open up your freezer. Open up your freezer. It's a chicken wing there. Could be a piece of fish there. Hello? Because why? You have dominion and authority. Clap your hands for the Holy Ghost. Now let me say something. When he talked to Adam, he said, Adam, and you find it in Genesis 2.15, he said, I want you to dress the garden. Now let me back up a little bit. He, he, he puts Adam in the midst of the garden, okay? He allows Adam to, he allows Eve, he allows Adam to, 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 to name Eve, and he puts Adam in the midst of the garden. Why do you think that God created you like him? I need you to take a moment, okay? Because I'm, I'm gonna say something, and, and I may get a lot of letters and a lot of, you know, little, you know, info nasty emails. That's what you call them, info nasty emails. Do you really think that God created you, put you on the earth, made you like him, his image, his likeness, gave you dominion and authority for you to fail, for you to be in poverty, for you to be sick all of your life, for you to be addicted? Do you really think that the shape that humanity is in, that the shape that mankind is in, the shape that the sons and daughters are in glorifies God? I say unto you, never. When he said, let us make man in our own image and our likeness, that man may have dominion and authority over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, the beast of the field. I'm going to make a man on the earth to carry on what I did on earth. Our Father who art in heaven, how will be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on where? On earth as it is in heaven. Write this down. God does not create you and gives you a function, hear me, just for you to do nothing. Let us make man in all his own likeness, that man may have dominion and authority, fish and sea, the fowl of the air, the beast of the field. Man, you must be, you must multiply, you must be fruitful, you must replenish the earth. That's all what God said. Guess what? God meant what he said. And you will never be able to do that until you become, listen to this word, operational. Somebody say operational. Say it again, operational. Say it one more time, operational. You will not be able to function the way God tells you to function. Your gift, your talent, your ability, your capability, your resources that God gave you before your mother met your father, your grandfather met your grandfather. Listen, everything he gave you, it will not function until you become operational. Operational simply means up and running. That's what it means. Operational means that you use what God has given you and you operate in that. My question to you this afternoon is simply this. Are you operational? Are you operational? Let's go back to Adam and Eve. He creates Adam and Eve. And he creates Adam. And listen to this very carefully. He creates Adam. Let us make a man in our own image and our own likeness. That man may have dominion and authority of fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, the beast of the field. Let us make a man like us. Puts Adam in the garden, or Adam is already in the garden, excuse me. And he tells Adam, second chapter Genesis, the 15th verse, he says, I want you to go to work. I want you to go to work. I want you to tend the garden that I have placed you in. Now, wait a minute. Adam has just been created. He has not been trained. He has not been taught. He has not been programmed. He hasn't taken an IQ test. He gets up and he tends the garden because he is what? Operational. Before Adam sinned, he was operational. He was able to do everything that God told him to do without training, without organization, without any kind of teaching because he was operational. You know what makes you unoperational? Sin. 
Adam became non-operational when he sinned. He was not able to operate under the power of the presence of God after he sinned. Now, my question is this. If we are made in the image of God and we have dominion and authority of the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, the beast of the field, and everything in the earth realm is geared towards us because in actuality, we are in charge of the earth realm. You don't believe it? Our Father who art in heaven, how be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's only humans on earth. It's only men and women on earth. Anything on earth that is going to get done is going to be done by you. In, in, any invention, done by you. Any great operation, done by you. Because we have been designated and assigned by God to take charge of the earth, to take dominion of our own, our own what? Domain. But you will never be able to do that if you are not operational. The capabilities, the abilities, the talents, the giftings, and the resources that are in you, you are born with it. So what does that mean? I, I want to talk to you because I am so sick of hearing people make excuses. You are born with talent, ability, capability, resources, and gifting. You are born with a certain IQ. You are born. Able. How many of you are born with, you got a certain ability, you just born with it, just born with it. Nobody taught you to do this. I'm born with the with ability to eat. Now, that's not me. That's you. That's, you know what, what I'm saying. So when God made you, he didn't just throw you out there. He put in you everything you need, needed to be successful. You're born with it. Now, let's go back. We've been talking six weeks, born in two. We're born into sin and shaped in iniquity. Okay, we're born into the world. Okay, you're born into a certain family. You're born into a certain race, a certain gender. Did you understand? A certain educational status, a certain financial status. You're, all, you're born into that. But now we go to the next stage. Even though you are born into the world, you're born with. God is such a good God. He does not leave you empty. He does not leave you in, in, in uh, well, how would I put it, unable to cope with life. Yes, you are born into sin and shaped in iniquity. Yes, you were born into this family and this gender and this race. Yes, you were born in all of these unfamiliar scenes and, and, and low income and this and that and such and such. He said, but wait a minute. I know you was born into, but you was also born with. I don't understand. Why? A man would remain poor. A man would remain under with all of the things that God has allowed you to be born with. Clap your hands for the Holy Ghost. So, the moment you are born, you are to become operational. Operational means this. Ready for use, up and running, the performance of a function you have been given. Listen to this, a performance of a function that you have been given. Ready for use, up and running. Now remember I talked to you about Adam, right? Okay, let's go back to Adam. Adam was created by God, flawless, sinless, perfect, with no inadequacies. So when God spoke to him, he was up and running. He was ready for use. He had no insecurities. No one had did him wrong and he was not singing somebody did me wrong song. Flawless, sinless, no inadequacy, up and running. But what about you and I? We were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. That simply means that we were born in certain races, Certain genders, certain, listen, certain environments, and, it's, and those environments maybe not conducive to where you want to go. But to overcome all of that, to overshadow all of that, God said, I know you're going to be born in, 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 in poverty. I, I know you may be born into a family of drugs. I know you may be born without a mother and a father, but I'm going to make up. 
I'm going to make it up to you. I'm going to give you talent, ability, capability, resources, and giftings so that it can overshadow what you have been born into. And if you use what you were born with, hear me, it would overshadow and overcome what you have been born into. Clap your hands for the Holy Ghost. So let's go back to Genesis 1.15. Adam, I need, you, I need to give you a job. What's the job, God? I need you to tend the garden. Get a job. Get a job. This is your job. Hear me. What? Do your job. So what is he telling Adam? He's saying, you got to do something with all of this stuff that I gave you. You got to do something with all these gifts. You got to do something with all this capability. You got to do something with all this talent. You got to do something with all this ability that I can. Stop bragging about what you can do and do something with it. Now, wait a minute now. Adam is in the Garden of Eden. He had everything he needed. He did not need to work. He had all of the water that he needed, all of the meat he needed, all of the vegetation that he needed. His girlfriend was there. Did you hear what I said? He didn't need anything. And God still required him to use what he put in him. I dare say to you this afternoon that if we would stop whining and crying and blaming everybody about our failures, about our inadequacies, about our low financial, st uh, financial status and begin to use what God gives you, I will guarantee you, you will become up and running in no time. Clap your hands for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Let me read Genesis 2.15. And the Lord God took man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. There was no need for him to be taught. He didn't train him. He didn't give him rules and regulations about how to keep the God. The only rule and regulation that, Adam, that God gave Adam was this. This is the restriction. Don't eat from the tree in the midst of the garden. Everything else is good. You can do whatever you want to do. You can eat whatever you want to eat. You can go from one side of the garden to the other side of the garden. You can do whatever. Just work and obey. Work and obey. As long as Adam was obeying. What is obeying? Operational. See, let me say something to you. You're thinking that the Bible is some old book, okay, that you don't need. Check the real, check the Bible out and compare it to your life right now. I'll guarantee you everything in that Bible that you did and you're being punished for that you did took some stuff off your life. Am I right? Hello, somebody. Everything that you did not do, it stopped you from becoming what you could become and what you could do. Why? Even though God will name you, Hear me, create you and give you your function. Let us make man in our own image and our own likeness that man may have dominion and authority over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, the beast of the field. Let us make a man like us. If you don't operate in what God gives you, you're stuck. Can I tell you something? If you, are, if you do not become operational, you become stuck. Doesn't matter what that God named you. Doesn't matter that God gave you this function and that function. It doesn't matter if you have a talent and ability and a capability, resource and a gift. Doesn't matter, it doesn't make a hill of beans difference. If you will refuse to use what God has given you, you cannot be operational. If you cannot be operational, who do you benefit? Who do you bless? That's the question, isn't it? If we are the sons and daughters of God in the kingdom, if we are workers with him in the kingdom, if we are to be the ambassadors of the, of, of the kingdom of God, they that represent Jesus Christ, how can you do that and you're not operational? How 
can you do that and you're not up and running? How can you do that if you're not using what God gave you to become operational? Listen now, not just in the spiritual realm, because you're supposed to be operational in the spiritual realm, but you're supposed to be operational in the natural realm. With your family, with your money, with your environment, with your health. He said, listen to me. Everything that I gave you before your mother met your father and your grandmother met your grandfather, I gave it to you so that you can become operational. So now let's go back to born into. Born into. You are born into sin and shaped in iniquity. All of us have been born into sin and shaped in iniquity. All of us have been born into this world. All of us have been born into a race, a gender, a culture, a financial status, an environment, so forth and so on. Some, some, some statuses are good and some statuses are not. But this is what God has did. He said, regardless of how you have, what you have been born into, regardless of what your mama was or your daddy was or your race was or the racism or the non-racism, it makes no difference. Stop using it as an excuse. You, you know, you know, uh, see, my wife left me and da, 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 da. no, it makes no difference. He said, because the moment before you were born, you were born with. I understand you were born in two. Born into sin, shaped in iniquity. But I stuck a big old package in there. You were born with talent, ability, capability, resources, and gifting. I gave you that so you can survive. I gave you that so you can, so, so, so you can what? Thrive. I gave you that so you can maintain. I gave you that so you can gain. All of this I give you before you were born to make sure that you could make it. Clap your hands for the Holy Ghost. So, the question that you want to ask yourself this afternoon is, why am I blaming everybody for my dysfunction? Why am I blaming everybody for my, for my poverty? Why am I blaming everybody for my idiosyncrasies? Why am I blaming everybody for my lack? Why am I blaming everybody for my lack of health? Why am I blaming everybody for this, that, and such and such? Because when it comes down to it, the finger points to us. Michael Jackson said it the best way. The man in the middle. Say it with me. The man in the middle. <laughs> Adam was equipped to do exactly what God said. He had the name, he was created by God, and he had the function. He had the name, he was created by God, and he had the function. No problem with Adam. Adam did not have a problem until he decided to disobey God. Because the moment disobedience and rebellion comes in and, and lack, you know, laziness and all of these things, that means you're going on the other side. He had no problem up and running. My question is this, do you have a problem being up and running? When I'm talking about up and running, I'm talking about up and running in your life. I'm talking about up and running in your finances, up and running in your health, up and running in your mental stability. Are you having a problem? Doing what you know you should be doing. Are you having a problem accessing your gifts and your talent and your ability and your capability so you can be productive and profitable in the earth realm? Are you having a problem doing the right thing? Mmm, it's something to think about. Because Adam did not have a problem until he disobeyed God. If you go to the second chapter, after he told Adam, I need you to go to work. He said, now these are the restrictions that I have in this garden. And he probably took that on around and said, this, all of this is yours. All of the trees, all of the flowers, the beasts of the field, the fowl of there, all of it belongs to you, Adam. I just want you to do one thing. Don't trust, touch the tree in the midst of the garden. <laughs> and he couldn't even do that. I, I want to say something to you, and I'm going to say it, and I'm going to be saying it for the next two years probably. All right. The shape you are in, you tried to get yourself out of, couldn't do it. 
Your job couldn't get you out of it. Your business couldn't get you out of it. Your wife, your husband couldn't get you out of it. The chick on the side couldn't get you out of it. Hello? It's only one person that can get you out of what you are into. His name is God. His name is Jesus. Did you hear me? Oh, uh, you can look hard if you want to. You tried everything. Hello? And you're still in the same shape that you are in. You hooked up with this one. You lined yourself up with that one. You took a class over here and a class over there. You reinvented yourself only to find out you're stuck in the same position for one reason. You have what it takes. He named you, let us make man in our own image and our own likeness, that man may have dominion and authority over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, the beast of the field. Let us make a man like us. He named you. He created you. He told you what you could do. He gave you your function. But when it came down to you functioning, you couldn't do it. Because in order to function, you have to be operational. In order for you to be operational, you better hear me real good. You got to go back to the manual and find out what the manual says. And guess what? The manual is this. Huh? This is the manual. So you can have all the functions that you want and all of the names that you want. And you can run around talking about what God is going to do for me and what God said I was and what God said I could do. But until you become op operational according to this word, you're just a man. You're just a woman. And being a man or a woman without that manual subjects you back into born again, born into. See, let, what born into means what? Born into sin and shaped in iniquity. The only thing that gets you born out of is what you are born with and born again. But if you don't practice born again, if you don't practice and apply the word of God to every aspect of your life, it sends you back to square one. Square one is born into, born into sin and shape any no way out. God is your way out. Let me give you the definition of operational, the performance and implementation of what? of a thing or a function. Let me give you the definition of function. An activity, an activity or a purpose natural that is intended for a man or a thing. So when God spoke to Adam, he says to Adam, I am commanding you to keep this garden. I'm giving
Thanks for watching in God's Flow with PM Blossom. Services every Sunday 12.45 p.m. at World Outreach Conference Center 4 East 111th Street, Chicago, Illinois 60628. For prayer request please call 833-963-0253 that's 833-963-0253. Leave your name and your need and we will pray for you. Let's have a conversation together about today's message you can do so at www.yourspaceyourface.org.